And in just a moment, we'll stay with legal matters as we're speaking to a group of lawyers who are raising concerns with the road accident fund. And it does seem that there are more problems at the road accident fund as lawyers from several organizations representing victims of road accidents have issued a memorandum on what they call a crisis at that institution. It appears that there's a struggle to log and process some claims for their clients. Let's get more details now. We're joined by Eunice Masipa, um, Law Society of South Africa's present. Thank you so much, Eunice, for your time. What's going on? Thank you so much for having me, Bongiwe. Um, I think first and foremost, uh, before we start, um, we need to establish why the Road Accident Fund is important and why it was established. Um, it was established to create reasonable um, compensation or provide reasonable compensation to victims of road accident. And this was done in line with the Constitution. And um, it is also important to note that um, the Road Accident Fund is part of a system of um, a social security, which was also established in line with the Constitution. And this should um, be one of the important factors to note why the Road Accident Fund is important and why it, sh it should operate at high level and efficiently. Now, the issues that we raised in the memorandum uh, of Bongiwe are very critical and important. First and foremost, um, we are experiencing difficulties or legal practitioners are experiencing difficulties with lodgement of claims due to um, unlawfully implemented uh, management uh, directives from the Road Accident Fund, which requires that legal practitioners comply with uh, an exhaustive list of um, requirements, which in turn uh, deprives uh, road accident victims, you know, their due um, compensation or their right to claim to, to, to the Road Accident Fund. And ultimately, there is a risk of, um, you know, their claims prescribing. So because the required... Mm -hmm. Eunice, yes, pardon me for coming in there. What are some of these mm -hmm. requirements? Um, first and foremost, well, for example, um, they require that um, legal practitioners must submit a list or must, must submit um, medical legal ex experts. And, you know, this list is exhaustive. It includes orthopedic surgeons, neurosurgeons, um, occupational ther uh, therapists, physio, uh, um, orthopedic therapists as well. Um, you need a confirmation from um, SASA um, whether the claimant is receiving um, a grant, whether it is a disability grant or a child support grant or which in ever form, um, you know, and, um, and these requirements are not provided for in terms of the Road Accident Fund Act. Mm. So these management directives were just uh, unilaterally implemented by the Road Accident Fund without um, consultation with the legal profession as well as the public. So when it comes then to, to some of these particular requirements, do they simply lengthen the process of, of claiming or is it an impossibility then for you to be able to claim if you're not able to provide some of these? Um, Bongiwe, um, well, these requirements, it's very important that you submit um, most importantly the medical legal expert reports. Those are very crucial to um, to the claims. However, to require legal practitioners to submit those at the very beginning or the inception of the claims, um, we believe is, is, is very unreasonable mm -hmm. because you can understand that this is a process and before a claimant can attend these experts, they need to have reached what we call MMI. So meaning that they, would, they should have waited one year uh, post accident before they are able to um, attend um, uh, these expect appointments. So meaning that you cannot lodge a claim with the RAF uh, before you have reached or you have reached one year post accident. So th there's also, of course, I'm sure something that you've seen where the deputy minister and uh, the RAF are blaming the lawyers for the many of uh, the RAF woes, including the large backlog in processing some of the claims as well as the long delays in payouts to victims. And uh, they're blaming this on the legal practitioners. How do you respond? 
Um, Bongi, I, I, I think this is um, unreasonable to blame legal practitioners. In actual fact, it is the poor administration of the road accident fund. Um, you, I think from the memorandum, you would have noted that the road accident fund terminated a panel of attorneys mm. which were responsible to efficiently uh, administer or manage the claims management. And in that sense, we were able to um, efficiently settle claims. So with the termination of that panel, um, we have seen obviously an increase in a backlog um, of claims which have not been settled. And further to note, Bongiwe, is that uh, we have got reports that there is a high rate of suspensions, a high rate of dismissals within the RAF, which in turn reduces the capacity of the RAF to attend to claims and efficiently and effectively administer claims. All right. I think, though, while while we look at some of these requirements, and I hear you, we'll put these, of course, to the RAF in just a moment. But one could maybe say they're trying to make sure that the processes are above board and stringent, given what we've seen in the past, and lawyers not covering themselves in glory. For example, you think about an attorney who was arrested for alleged theft of 3.5 million rand RAF money in the Eastern Cape. The SIU recovering 18 million rand from law firms and attorneys that received duplicate payments from the fund an attorney arrested for allegedly defrauding her client out of a 1.8 million rand of her payout in Pumalanga. these are but some and they are very serious issues that also need the legal profession to turn the mirror to themselves no i i agree with you 100 percent on that point um i think those examples that you have mentioned um are just pure cases of unethical legal practitioners and we've got a regulatory body that deals with those particular cases which is the legal practice council mm. so they are in charge of dealing with unethical legal practitioners and they are dealt with um in accordance with the law so what our memorandum is about is uh, the deprivation by the RAF to um, victims of the road accident fund to lodge claims, um, you know, to the road accident fund, obviously, when they are represented. That is our grind. Yeah. Um, when it comes to legal practitioners who are unethical, we've got a regulatory body and uh, we do not condone, condone such behavior. And obviously, we call upon legal practitioners to ensure that at all times they are ethical as uh, our profession is a noble one. And I was I was asking in terms of, as you say, that the process is now requiring just a little bit more and which is also a burden on yourselves. And I was saying that maybe you can also understand as the legal profession that some of these issues are happening because there may have been issues in the past. And I'm going to put their own issues to themselves. That is the RAF, of course. But some of this is happening as an on goal that may be scored by some unscrupulous individuals who are among you as well. 100%. But, you know, I think it is really unfair to paint all legal practitioners with That's the same brush. That's what I'm saying, some. Yes. yes, some of them. And, um, you know, for the Road Accident Fund to implement these management uh, directives unilaterally, which is um, in contradiction with the Road Accident Fund, you know, is, is unlawful. What we would have preferred is that the Road Accident Fund consults with the legal profession, consults with the public, and mm. we uh, collectively provide solutions that would ensure that claims are administered effectively for the benefit of um victims of of accidents yeah. and 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 one of the things uh, very briefly then is that uh, i i see also there's a concern that the ceo does not have the legal background as well uh, there are concerns in that regard are you saying he possibly may not be fit for his office um what legal practitioners are saying or as is the law society of south africa is that um we would recommend that um, the CEO of the Road Accident Fund be a legally qualified individual with legal qualifications who understands the administration of the Road Accident Fund from grassroots level and who possibly may have represented the Road Accident Fund or alternatively the public. That is what we are recommending mm. as the legal profession. 
All right, Eunice, let's put some of these concerns that you've raised to the Road Accident Fund and let's see then what some of the answers we are getting. As you're saying that, you know, consultations would have been important in this particular regard. So let's see then what they have to say about this. Let me thank you for your time. Do appreciate it. That is at Eunice Masipa, Law Society of South Africa President. Talking about very serious issues, you think about um, some of the issues that have been raised about the RAF and now there appears to be a burden that has been put on lawyers, but we'll get some answers in, in, in that regard because there have also been some of the administrative concerns that have been raised about some of the lawyers in this particular matter so which then segues us into our question tonight we are asking you if you are happy with the way the road accident fund has been handling claims let's take a look at some of your tweets so far Monisene, good evening, Wong Yue and the team. Hi, for me, I never experienced anything regarding payment of RAF, but in most people who once got the money, I think it was enough. It's just that it doesn't last that money. Yo? And of course, some Monisene there. Ayanda saying, I'm not happy. Claims took a long time while you're not working if you're a victim. And uh, I suppose uh, then this also leads to some of the questions around even the burden of some of the requirements that are now, of course, uh, being, uh, you know, need to be met. Ligasa saying, Lochane Batubeke to Locha Ligasa. I think RAF is captured. How can someone who lost income, disabled and legs cut be given 1.6 million rand? How, how is he going to raise his kids? I'd rather go to private lawyers to assist me to claim. Opa saying, Bongi, I'm not happy total because they delay with our money. And that is Opa there in Tabazimbi in Limpopo. Let's get you some answers now and speak to the CEO of the Road Accident Fund, who's going to be responding to some of what we've been speaking to the lawyers about. Dr. thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Firstly, what do it, how do you respond to some of the concerns that have been raised by the lawyers? I'm sure you are listening, you are smiling there what's happening yeah i think uh, good uh, afternoon and good afternoon to the viewers um i'm smiling because when people want to distort facts bongi way that's what happens uh, facts by their very nature are very stubborn uh, and of course the truth will never change and um, when we arrived at the road accident fund on average it took about five years to settle a claim uh, this is after it takes um, about three years for lawyers to bring these claims to us. So it is unfair for people that are now settling matters within 120 days and 50% of those claims are settled within a year to be pelted with what has happened in the past. And that's what we are saying. We are saying it used to happen like that in the past. It's no longer the case now. And I think it's important that we look at what we have done since we have arrived. I mean, um, when the 1920 financial year, the performance of the road accident fund was 56% of its targets. When we started this new model, um, it became 78%, 22% increase. The next year it was 84%. And I can guarantee South Africans that after the audit has been finalized on the 31st of July, it will be above 90%. So And people will then say um, this is a, a collapsing organization. I mean, a collapsing organization that performs at 90% I've never seen. So they are accusing um, the RAF of putting a burden on the lawyers with more of the requirements, uh, you know, things like letters from orthopedic surgeons, neurosurgeons, con confirmations of SASA payouts and all of that. And they say you unilaterally did this and you should have consulted them. There's no truth to that. Uh, they've taken the matter to court. We have clarified that the consultations were done. In the first place, we issued what we call the directive. And of course, they complained. We then went back to them and we issued draft regulations that were then consulted widely with them for close to a year. And of course, we came. And this is the problem, Bongio, because when people claim everywhere else, they want to come with uh, documents that are required for them to be able to assess that claim and be able to know whether the claim exists or not and they would know the liability so the difficulty of this is that 90 percent of all the backlog claims that we receive do not have any documents whatsoever and what we then did is that we brought this minimum requirement to ensure that at least when it's 
uh, in, in front of us, we are able to uh, assess it. I'll give you an example that people would actually put in a claim without an accident report. Now, where is the nexus between your injuries and uh, the claim that you make if we don't have an accident report that you have submitted? So those were the things. And of course, um, what they would call expert uh, reports were never uh, given to us at the beginning of this claim. And then they abused the certain section of the Act, which is 24, for section 24.5, which said that if we do not uh, object to a claim within 60 days, then it's valid in all respects in law. And that's what they abused. And once it is valid in all respects in law, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, you would have to sit with it. They then drip feed you for the next five years when they're busy uh, putting in what we call legal fees for to the tune of 10.6 billion a year. We have reduced that to about 3 billion, and that's what the, the crimes are. So th there's also, you know, partly, I'm, I'm sure you heard as we were reading some of the tweets there and even some of the individuals who got in touch with ourselves when we're yes. looking at the issues around the RAF. Some claimants are saying that if they do this individually, they struggle with the processes, their documents are getting lost. Sometimes when they're even trying to get answers on their claims, they're not getting answers. Some are saying that they even get lesser money than they would have expected. And that's why now they have to, you know, enlist the, the, the services of lawyers. So how does the RAF then respond to this? Because these are some serious concerns that are being raised by some of our viewers. Uh, absolutely. If they are claimants, of course, we, we, we worry a lot about and then this year is the year of the claimant that I have because we are saying that claimants must benefit from this system than any one of us because we administrate a system for the claimant. But as you won't the difficulty is as someone who implements the law, and it's very difficult to do things that are outside the law. Section 19C, Roman figure one and Roman figure two, are clear about uh, who can actually, uh, they say, it's to prosecute a claim, suggesting that. Uh, a direct claim, Bongiwe, you can put it in, but there must be a time when, if we do not react, you will then have to issue summons. Now, I can issue summons myself, you can issue summons yourself. So even if you were a person that is like me, who's, uh, you know, educated and all that, you still can't lodge a direct claim at the rough, simply because Section 19C actually meant is meant for the lawyer. So the system as it sits currently is actually meant for the lawyers. If you look at Section 24, you would see that it says that we must receive uh, these documents in paper, which makes it very difficult to, to manage. And that's why now what we are doing, we are making sure that if you bring a claim, we look at it at that time, pre-assess it and tell you whether this claim is a claim or not in terms of the minimum requirements. Only 3% of what is brought, even by lawyers, has failed the mark because they do not give us the minimum requirements for us to make a, an offer. And we are supposed to do this in 120 days. For the first time in the history of RAF 1, we are able to settle matters in 120 days if you bring these things to us in time. We are able to pay after that 180 days, we are able to pay. So it's different from what we, we used to see in the past, which was taking uh, on average about five years to eight years. There are also, though, some concerns that were raised by Scopa recently in, in a visit to, to your offices. They talk about how they found chaotic working conditions, boxes of documents mm -hmm. lying on the floor, and employees supposed to function without an office, without office furniture and equipment. Well, I don't know about this equipment they're talking about because uh, the equipment we have does not even belong to us, so it can't be attached. But the history of attachments at the Road Accident Fund is because of the very same lawyers. Uh, the, the reality is this, they used to attach our bank account and we, they, they, they couldn't. We discovered duplicate payments of more than $1 billion because they would just attach the bank account and pay themselves. And then when we pay them, they never return those monies. So the reality is this. Uh, Section 24... Uh, says that you must bring paper to us. You must either post it or bring it. It's not true that they, they do a symbolic because those things were in boxes. I mean, what is in a box is something that is indexed sitting in there. Where should paper go? It must go in a box. And we disagree with Scopa that things are symbolic because we are saying we have got an APP against which we must be measured. And I'm saying to you, uh, uh, as I'm here today, I'm quite uh, sure that... Uh, and 90% would have been achieved in the 22, 23 financial year of the targets that we set ourselves. So how can an organization that is in shambles achieve 90% of its targets, or more than 90%? It's just not true. So let's not play 
the man, let's play okay, the, 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 the issues. If there are issues there, let's address the issues. And Talking we are saying to them... Uh, pardon me, pardon me for coming in there. Talking yeah. about playing the man, they say though that the CEO of this particular organization should be someone with a legal qualification, thus suggesting, according to some of them, you may not be fit for this office? Well, let me tell you this, I'm going to read you section 12.1b of the of the RAF Act, which says uh, the chief executive officer and staff, and it says the chief executive officer shall be a person who is suitably qualified and experienced to manage the day-to-day -day affairs of the fund. Now, I want to know which uh, law school teaches fund management, because I, I learned fund management at a, at, a, at a commercial school in the University of Natal and throughout my qualifications. I'm a banker by profession, and I understand fund management very well. So uh, my previous two uh, uh, predecessors were also not uh, lawyers. So why do lawyers want uh, 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 um, one of their own to come and run the root and scan funding level space. But in any event... Why do you uh, think uh, they do? I competed with them. I beat them because they applied for this position. They are claiming as if they did not. And they tried to uh, set this appointment of mine aside and failed. They have lost 20 billion in the last three years with the new system that we are producing now. We, we are producing a new system that works, a new system that makes RAF better, but it's taking money away from the lawyers to give you the payments, and they are very, very unhappy about that. All right. There's clearly a need for us to have a conversation with you and the lawyers in one and really understand what's going on here. And I do hope that you will indulge us and we'll uh, give them a call as well so we can sit down and really just get to the bottom of some of these issues. But thank you so much for your time, Mr. Lizuelo. Do appreciate it. That was uh, the Road Accident Fund CEO, Collins Lizuelo.